Hello everyone, my name is Suhas Kumar Bharadwaj and I'm currently pursuing my Masters in Computer Science from the University of Florida. Today I'll be presenting my project on a traffic sign classifier which was developed using a convolution neural network. The project was developed for the uh, subject pattern recognition. Before starting the presentation, I would like to give you an overview of the slides in the presentation. I will start off with the introduction which gives why the topic was chosen and how it's relevant to the modern day. Uh, after that, I'll be uh, speaking about the data set that was used. Then I will move on to the implementation of the project and the architecture of the neural network used. Finally, I'll be presenting the results and concluding the project. The topic was chosen keeping in mind that autonomous vehicles are the future of transport. Uh, in the modern day world, everything is becoming automated and the entire world is getting connected over the internet. So autonomous vehicle will play a very large part in the transportation uh, sector in the years to come. So the functions that need to be performed by an aut autonomous vehicles are uh, obstacle detection, pedestrian detection, path planning, lane detection, traffic light recognition, traffic sign classification. These are some of the main functions that need to be performed. And each uh, operation is very important to the functioning of, a, of an autonomous vehicle. One of the crucial operations of an autonomous vehicle is traffic sign classification. Uh, the traffic signs need to be recognized and classified from the input video. The input video is obtained from cameras that are on board of the vehicle. Once the traffic signs are uh, recognized, these need to be classified. And the next action performed by the vehicle depends on what the traffic sign is classified as. For example, if the traffic sign says stop, then the vehicle is supposed to stop at a particular spot and these signs vary from country to country. So the data set used for the project is of uh, German traffic signs. Uh, it, uh, the German traffic sign data set is used for both training and testing the data. The data consists of 43 different classes of traffic signs and it has over 50,000 images. The data set is available in a pickled format that is used for the network and these are some of the images from the data set. The pickle data set has four key value pairs. The first key value pair is the features which gives the width, height and channels of the image. The second key value pair is the labels which gives the label of the traffic sign. Uh, the label may be a stop for a stop sign and yield for the yield sign. So this gives the class to which the traffic sign belongs to. The third key value pair is the sizes which gives the original width and height of the image. The fourth and last key value pair is coordinates, coordinates which gives the bounding box around the traffic sign in the image. So now the this is the class distribution of the entire data set. As you can see there is a lot of discrepancy in the densities of each class. So this data needs to be uh, augmented so that the class densities of every class is balanced to ensure that uh, the network does not develop a bias towards a certain class. Uh, the data augmentation involves uh, rotations and translations uh, which in the end uh, result in the class distributions turning out like this. This has a more uh, balanced uh, class density and hence the neural network does not develop a bias towards any other class. Now let's get into the implementation details of the traffic sign classifier. Uh, the traffic sign classifier is built using a convolution neural network. Uh, the TensorFlow Slim library is used to build the traffic sign classifier. Uh, filters of varying size are used to convolve over the input. Max poles extract the local maximas and may leave out some spatial information. Uh, this is done because uh, we care whether the speed limit sign shows 120 kilometers per hour or whether it's a stop sign, not where in the input image the stop sign occurred or where in the input image the 120 kilometers per hour speed limit is present. 
fully connected layers are used to classify the input into one of the 43 base classes from the training data set. Now let's look at the neural network architecture. The input to the neural network is of size 32 cross 32 cross 3. Uh, the first layer is the is a convolution layer uh, with a 3 cross 3 kernel and stride 1 and it has a depth of 16 and it uses same padding. Uh, the output of this convolution layer is to a max pooling layer of the same kernel size and stride and with the same padding. The output of the uh, max pool layer is then fed to the another convolution layer but this co convolution layer has a size of phi cross phi with uh, a stride of 3 and depth of 64. The padding used in this layer is valid padding. Uh, this, out this layer outputs to the another max pooling layer uh, with size 3 cross 3 stride 1 and valid padding again. The, the input then is fed to another con convolution layer of size 3 cross 3 with stride 1 but with a depth of 128 and using the same padding. Another convolution layer is, uh, is the next layer of the neural network uh, and the size of this convolution layer is 3 cross 3 with stride 1 and the depth of this layer is 64 and it uses the same padding. Finally there's the last max pooling layer of size 3 cross 3 with stride 1 and the padding set to valid. Uh, the output of this max pooling layer is sent to the flatten function uh, which converts the input to a, uh, an input of single dimension and this input is fed to the fully connected layer. Uh, the fully connected layer has 1024 hidden units and this is sent to the dropout uh, regularizer. From the dropout regularizer it goes to another fully connected layer of 1024 units and uh, the output of this is sent to another uh, dropout uh, regularizer which then is finally fed to the last fully connected layer this final fully connected layer has 43 units which is used in calculating the final 43 logits corresponding to the target traffic sign classes. Uh, this was the description of the neural network architecture. Now I'll present to you some of the results of the uh, traffic sign classifier. So the training was run for 40 epochs for with the uh, a batch size of 128. As you can see the final training accuracy was 99.89% and the final validation accuracy was 99.08% uh, and it took about uh, 211 minutes to run. The model was then run against the test data set from the German traffic sign database and the final test accuracy came up to 96.06% uh, for training of uh, just uh, 211 minutes and this model was then used against some random uh, uh, traffic signs from the internet and, as, and these were the results. Uh, now I'll just show you a demo of uh, the project running against these uh, real world examples from uh, traffic signs from uh, all over the world. Uh, this is the folder that contains all the traffic sign uh, signs and as you can see there's a 20 km per hour limit, an 80 km per hour limit, a road work sign and a stop sign. So I'll just run this uh, against an already saved model uh, of the project. So this is the output of the model running against these random traffic signs. Uh, it's the same as the one shown in the slides. As you can see the model is fairly accurate for uh, traffic signs that are not part of the training or the testing data set and some of the uh, traffic signs are taken from 
the american data set as well so they don't even belong to the german traffic sign data set so i would like to conclude that uh, uh, accurate and efficiently built uh, traffic sign classifier was developed using tensorflow and the tensorflow slim library was used to build the uh, model and it performed with uh, satisfactory results i would like to take this opportunity to thank dr oliver wu depeng for guiding me and giving me valuable inputs which played a, a crucial role in the implementation of the project thank you everyone